Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. After a substantive hiatus, I am back with another video. As most of you already know, this is the time when the Swedish Nobel Academy announces its yearly prizes for the Nobel in Physics, Chemistry, Medicine, Economics, Peace and of course Literature. For the past almost 120 years, Several laureates from across the world have received this prestigious prize in literature, starting from our very own Rabindranath Tagore to the likes of T.S. Eliot, Samuel Beckett, Rudyard Kipling, and many more. And last year, it was won by the Tanzanian author Abdul Razak Gurna. So, in this video, I would like to predict who would probably win this year's Nobel, but if you want to know my actual prediction, you have to wait till the very end of the video where I would say who according to me should win the Nobel in the year of 2022. According to the Nobel Committee's website, the prize should be declared today, the 6th of October at 13.00 CEST and according to Indian Standard Time, that is 4 p.m. Which is why I will be publishing this video at 3 p.m. instead of my regular time of 8 p.m. But the other prizes which are generally awarded by the Nobel Committee before the Literature Prize, Physics, Chemistry and Medicine, I believe are ahead of Nobel. But none of those prizes, to the best of my knowledge, have been declared yet. So I'm guessing the Nobel Committee is running a little late. So if I am sure of the fact that the Nobel Committee is not going to give away the prize today, then this video will be uploaded at the regular time of 8 p.m. according to my generic schedule. So let's start with why exactly do we have a Nobel Prize? What exactly is its importance? Who are some of the people who should have won on the prize but didn't? And who is that one person who definitely shouldn't have won this prize? Well, to begin with, this prize was established by the great philanthropist Alfred Nobel at the beginning of the 20th century. And many people have won it for the last 120 years. There were some years when the Nobel was not given, especially during the Second World War, once during the First World War, and very recently when one person in the Nobel Prize Giving Committee was accused of sexual harassment. All of these cases constitute exceptions where the Nobel Prize was not given, but the last case where the Nobel Prize was not given, I think it was the year 2017 or 18, I don't exactly remember the date. But then the next year, two Nobel Prizes were given to uh, Peter Handke and Olga Tokarczuk. All of us were very happy with that decision that even when the Nobel was not given for one year, it was subsequently overcome by giving out two Nobels the subsequent year. So, this prize is not only the most prestigious prize in literature, but also carries with it a cash prize of one million dollars, US dollars that is, to anyone who receives this prize. So, automatically, if you receive this prize, you will become a millionaire. But if you think about it really carefully, anyone who could possibly win a Nobel is probably already a millionaire by this point of time. The fun part about the Literature Nobel as compared to the other Nobel Prizes is that the shortlist of people who have been nominated for the Nobel Prize by several committees or several educational institutes across the country is not made public at the very onset, according to a very popular understanding, the shortlist of people who were selected for the Nobel Prize in 2022 will be published 50 years from now in the year 2072. And we are not even sure who were on the shortlist last year or the year before that or the year before that. But of course, there were very many conjectures, guesses all across the planet as to who could have possibly been on the list. For the last five, six years, it has been a common understanding that the Nobel Committee has tried and found out voices which have been underrepresented, people from countries where there have not been any Nobel laureates in the past. They have tried and made sure that representation was wide and all-consuming, especially when they gave away the Nobel to Svetlana Alexevich or Bob Dylan. This, these were exceptional cases where Svetlana was probably the first 
Nobel laureate in literature who predominantly wrote non-fiction and Bob Dylan is probably the first Nobel laureate who is predominantly a singer-songwriter though we have had a songwriter Nobel laureate in the terms of Tagore in the year 1913. So the Nobel Committee is trying to spread its wings and award different types of people which is why it's very difficult to guess who would be winning the Nobel this year. But in addition to being a very prestigious prize, the Nobel Committee is also very famous for its lack of insight. It has failed to award people like Marcel Proust, James Joyce, Virginia Woolf and many, many, many others. Whereas there is one person who was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature and almost everyone knows that that was a propaganda. I'm of course talking about Winston Churchill who won the Nobel Prize up in and around the time of the Second World War. I don't remember the exact age. In the year 2018 when we were participating in the literature quiz for the Kolkata Quiz Festival, I had memorized the Nobel Laureate for every year starting from 1901 up until that particular year. I have of course forgotten all about that in the present day. But the question which is asked in this context is do we need to know all the Nobel laureates? Well the honest answer is no, you don't need to know all of them. The only reason why a Nobel laureate is important is because the moment they get Nobel Prize they get universally accepted, they get universal acknowledgement, recognition and praises. Now I'm not saying that anyone who could possibly get a Nobel was bereft of such things up until the moment they got a Nobel. But of course there are some people who were not so popular before they got the Nobel. But after their reception of that Nobel Prize, they successfully gained worldwide fame. In this context, it is absolutely important to talk about Jean-Paul Sartre, who was the only person in my knowledge who had refused to take the Nobel Prize because of his ideology. Now, all of these anecdotes make the Nobel Prize a really interesting thing to look up to. Every year in the month of October, the Nobel Committee gives out its six annual prizes. But then there is also another thing to be kept in mind here. After the year 1913, there has not been a single literature Nobel laureate from India. While this is highly saddening for us, it's also put things into perspective for us by taking into consideration the fact that maybe we have not produced literature of that quality which deserves a Nobel Prize to begin with. Now, if you ask me, is there no one in India who deserves a Nobel Prize at this moment? Then I would say probably there is. But then that also begs the question, how do we define someone from India? Is it someone who is born, brought up and presently resides in India? Or is it someone who was just born in India and now resides elsewhere? Because if that is the case, then of course we have Salman Rushdie who has been overlooked for the Nobel Prize several times in the past if we are to believe common rumor. But in addition to that, I believe in 10 to 15 years of time, we will see Amitabh Ghosh, one of my favorite authors, being considered for the Nobel Prize, if not receiving one right away. So now that we are at the end of the video, I am now going to tell you who according to me is going to win the Nobel Prize this year. Of course, it is a guess and no one can tell for sure. But according to me, I think this year Salman Rushdie is going to win. Not only because of the fact that he is an excellent writer, but the Nobel Prize, in addition to being a prize in literature, is also a highly political prize. Many of you might remember the fact that just a few weeks ago, Salman Rushdie was stabbed on stage and he was almost on the verge of dying he lost an eye and lost a significant portion of his liver functioning though now he is up and running thanks to the prayers of all his fans and readers across the world and the brilliant medical care that he was given in that country but because of this attack Salman Rushdie becomes a very important figure in this year's Nobel of course there are always the usual or common suspects like Haruki Murakami, Ngugi Wathiongo, Margaret Atwood and the like. But then 
these people have been deserving a Nobel for a very long time and the Nobel committee has overlooked them every single time. If any one of these people get the Nobel, I will also be very happy. But if Salman Rushdie gets the Nobel, he will probably only be the second person of Indian descent to win the Nobel Prize in Literature. Now, since the Nobel Prize is a political prize, the Nobel Committee might think that Salman Rushdie might not live long and the entire sympathy of the reading world, including esteemed organizations like the Booker Prize, who have spoken up in his favor, despite him having a fatwa issued against him in many countries. Because of all these things taken into consideration, the Nobel Committee might just think that this is the right and appropriate moment to award Salman Rushdie with the Nobel Prize. But of course, we can expect them to give away the prize to completely someone random. Of course, not random. By random, I mean someone not so well known as Rushdie or not so well known to us Indian readers because we are only subjected to those kinds of literature which get worldwide access like literature written or produced in the UK, US or other popular European countries. We generally don't know much about literature from the southern parts of America, South America, Africa or maybe even Australia or New Zealand. We don't have much knowledge about that because of the way in which these books are marketed in the international marketplace. Now, all these things taken into consideration, I really hope the Nobel Committee makes a really good and nice decision this year and gives away the Nobel to someone whom we can all celebrate all across the world without having any kinds of second thoughts. So this was my video about the Nobel Prize this year. I would also like to thank you for supporting me in all my past endeavors. I am probably going to take a small break from YouTube of about a month or so. I will probably return to YouTube after Pujo. I hope you will keep my channel alive up until that point of time. I might upload a short here or there, but then a long videos I probably won't be uploading until and unless I am very bored that is. Thank you for watching my content. If you have any questions, queries, doubts or comments, of course, don't forget to leave them down in the comments. I will see you in the next video, which might take a while to come. Up until then, hasta la vista.